Through Hell. 54 Days After D-Day. Update. My story is on my profile. Take a look. I've posted a couple of times over the last month but ended up deleting it since my WS knows this account, and people started getting legal. I'll add an update. So, I didn't listen to the advice I got here. I was so sure we were different, you've all heard that before, I bet. My ex-wife even said to be careful about online advice as they don't know us or our relationship. To pick up where my last post left off. She ended it with him after we talked and had ex. We started our week by talking about how we would heal. I asked her to start staying at the house again so we could speak more, but she refused. She said she wasn't ready. The first few days felt like us again. We talked about the future and how we were going to navigate our reconciliation. I started maintaining our house and functioning again. We had plans for her to come over at the end of the week for a swim and hangout. As we got closer and closer to the end of the week, my ex-wife became distant. She was ignoring texts and giving one-word answers. We got to the hangout day, and it was immediately apparent something was wrong. She explained that she was just so messed up, that she was incapable of helping me deal with healing from the affair while she was trying to fix herself. I wanted to keep the house and work through this as partners, she wanted to live separately to heal so we could get back together in a few months and work on building trust. Obviously, I couldn't force her to stay, so eventually we decided on my ex-wife's plan of separate residence. We talked about finding places not too far from each other for visits. I was going to get my dog so we talked about our dogs meeting and being friends, she took our dog as it was in her name despite the dog being utterly devoted to me and barely caring about the cold WS. I stayed with a friend for a few days when she couldn't stay with her sister, and when I got back, we had a couple nights we'd be in the house at the same time. Tuesday night, we talked a lot. She cried, and I comforted her. Wednesday morning, we talked more before work about our plans and how we'd be together again. Wednesday evening, again we talked and hung out more. Things seemed to be going well. I had a weak moment and told her I was taking a shower but that I'd leave the door open. She came into the bathroom as I was starting the water and started crying. I comforted her and rubbed her back and head. She cried, saying she loved me but was so scared after our time apart, I wouldn't want her, and she'd be alone forever. After she calmed down, I sent her back to the couch and took a shower. Afterward I suggested she take hers to refresh after all her crying. Well, while she showered, I did what any BS would do in my position. I checked her phone. Astonishingly, after three months of an affair, she had never changed her phone password. One of the difficult things about maintaining an affair is that it requires the BS to trust the WS so entirely that they miss them. At any point in three months, I could have looked at her phone. I didn't. I trusted her with my entire being. It was a key reason I married her, trust. Well, I unlocked the phone, fully expecting to see nothing. It turns out she didn't even delete their recent messaging. They were sexting as of the day before, the Tuesday, and had X in the car as recently as the Monday. I saw all the pictures she sent him and those of him he sent her. The things they said to each other. Even him apologizing for his poor performance on Monday morning. She came out of the shower, and I confronted her immediately. I must have screamed at her for thirty minutes. I'm not someone who yells. I called her every single English insult I could think of. Words were not enough. She had been stringing me along for weeks as she continued seeing him. Something snapped in me then and there. Like the tether that kept me hoping we had a chance just broke. None of the memories, experiences, and bonds we had made over the last five years mattered anymore. The dream house we had didn't matter, the perfect proposal, ring, 
and wedding I gave her didn't matter. That was the end of us. Since then, we sold the house, I moved out, and our amicable separation agreement is in the works. Her laziness has caused delays in the contract and I'm awaiting the revised version from her lawyer now after my lawyer sent the first draft. House money will be tied up until it's signed, regardless. I'm hoping for no surprises in the revised agreement. As of tomorrow I'm starting on a 3.5-week vacation that includes time with friends and family. I'm hoping for the reset I need before work starts in earnest again in September. It's been a week and a half since I hit my lowest point. I survived it, barely, and seem to be slowly trending upwards. I keep in mind the important saying, healing is not a linear process, and brace myself for bad days. Today was a bad day but not as bad as some previous. I'm writing all this out as part of the process. In the end I have myself, a successful, fit, stable, and good-looking man looking to heal until one day I'm ready to find someone worthy of me. And we have her, a high-maintenance mentally ill, she has borderline personality disorder mixed with dependency and anxiety disorders, 35-year-old woman with fertility issues and now a history of adultery. She's living as a mistress to a man with a wife and child who he's not leaving. Can't help but shake your head, really. She had everything she ever wanted and destroyed it all for nothing. Thanks for reading. Redditor's Comments Redditor 1. Good for you. Absolutely don't take her back when she comes fishing around in a few months. Don't even read her messages. The dog was right, it knows which of you is the shitty human being. OP follow-up. I miss the dog so much. Redditor 2. Does the OBS know? I can't remember from your post history. OP follow-up. Yes. We spoke about a month ago. Redditor 3. OP was not divorcing either until he read her phone. So other OBS is in same boat, notify her OP. OP follow-up. It's just crazy for me to think back on the relationship. Her anxiety and mental illness essentially made her unable to properly express affection and intimacy. Two things that are hugely important to me. I knowingly married into the worst sex of my life. Sex has always been a big part of my life and I am a very passionate and empathetic person. Meaning, it's been very very good. Just never with her. Ever been with someone that doesn't know how to make out or kiss with passion? Doesn't hug or kiss or say, I love you randomly? Is it too anxious to give oral or be on top or really show any of their own personal desires? That was our sex life. I tried everything possible over our five years to get her out of her shell. Nothing worked so eventually our sex life got worse and worse. Seems like the rush of cheating was something that finally got through her shell of mental illness and anxiety. Damn, that hurts. I expected an equal in our relationship. In effort towards the life we were building but also in the bedroom. It would seem she prefers just to be directed in both. Definitely showing a lot of the dependent personality disorder. Her greatest fear of her whole life of being alone forever is also a huge sign of dependent personality disorder. Ironic that her actions will be what could seal that fate for her. OP's final update later, thanks for listening, like and subscribe and I will see you at the following story.